Hi everyone, here's the book MS once again. Asymmetry, technically speaking, is not the kind of book I would usually read, uh, basically because there, uh, it doesn't promise me to deliver any monster anytime soon. Uh, but then I read a random article about it and I found out that the author, Lisa Halliday, despite being an, America, an American, uh, currently lives in Milan. She moved to live there, uh, which told me that, of course, she's an enlightened woman and I had to read her debut novel. It had to be great. I had no idea it was going to be this great. I was completely mind blown. This is hands down uh, one of the best books I've read in recent months uh, without getting too, <laughs> too uh, you know, thrilled about it. Uh, talking about it is going to be difficult because I never talk about the plot in my reviews uh, or, and, and I try never to spoil any type of reading pleasure whatsoever. But in order to fully convey the genius nature of this book, I would have to talk about its structure. In this way, it, it is exactly as with I yell at Waltzman's Love and Treasure, which is a book, uh, my favorite book actually, I read last year. I will try my best. Just know, I'll just say that uh, throughout the first 100 pages of this book, I liked it, I thought it was great, and it was an amazing and addictive read. Uh, after, when I got to part two, I was like, whoa, Lisa, seriously? The book deals extensively with being a young writer, growing and finding yourself as a young artist and a passionate fan of art, a uh, consumer of art and entertainment, uh, discovering your own nature, what you like, through the figure of a mentor, which in this case is also the young protagonist's love interest and a much older, very famous writer. About the figure of this writer, much has been written, uh, and I'll talk about it uh, later in the video. Uh, for now, I will say that the book explores this idea, the idea of finding yourself creatively, beautifully, and it explores the depths of human perception and the convolutions of thought in young people when it comes to confronting your own writer, or your own writing, sorry, with that of generations past, with the great works of the past, in a way that is simply mesmerizing. Also very important in this book is the, um, well, the central fact that the main character, despite being a brilliant person, is a young woman in the company of a very famous old man, and the, the way this is seen by other characters is related very subtly in the novel. And I think I I need someday to reread this because it it is very possible that at times I didn't even realize the way these two people were perceived differently by other characters. A very basic example when they're in a restaurant, you get the wife of the owner coming to this famous writer and going, Oh, we love your books, you're such a genius, and then she turns to the protagonist and goes, You're very pretty. In a way, since it is so much a portrait of the artist as a young woman, this is inevitably kind of the archetypical uh, debut literary novel, while also being a sort of metafictional reflection on debut literary novels. And if this sounds slightly annoyed and self-absorbed, it's not. Keep in mind, and this I think should tell you how great a book this is, that the young protagonist is obsessed with literature. I do not particularly know well at all. People such, are not, such as Norman Mailer, Camus, uh, Primo Levi I know superficially but not well, uh, and she's obsessed with classical music, I think jazz and other types of music. I do not even know what genre they fell into and I still love the book. It's not like I, um, uh, you know, sometimes uh, I've had people telling me that I like The Brief Wondrous Life of Oscar Wilde by Huna Diaz brilliant masterpiece of a novel, because it deals so extensively with nerd culture, Dungeons and Dragons, comic books, uh, role-playing games, and stuff I like a lot outside literature. Uh, here, that, that that's not really something I can apply. I didn't like this book just because me and the main character share the same interests. I liked it because it's impossibly well written and it plays such beautiful literary games throughout, especially in the way the first and the second part interact with each other. And if you don't want to know anything about the structure of the book and you want to experience it 100% by yourself, by all means stop this review and go read a symmetry, amazing novel. Uh, I'm going. I'm not going to spoil you the structure at all, but I'm going to, to discuss it a tiny bit further by saying that I do not know, I sincerely don't know if this was 100% engineered by Halliday itself, 
but the second part of us asymmetry is precisely a representation of all those concerns when it comes to you know starting and finding your voice as a writer and writing a debut novel that are explored in, in part one. Part two reads very much as if a very talented writer uh, well into his or her career had written a, a debut novel with the explicit purpose of writing a debut novel the way writers usually do. The novel, despite being about, uh, you know, a life that is very different from the writer's, deals with the writer's passions when it comes to culture, when it comes to literature and music, deals with their concerns, deals with their preoccupations as an artist. Inevitably, it has those slightly metafictional moments um, uh, debut uh, c writers and creators uh, have to put everywhere. Uh, and I'm not saying that I am not sure this is uh, engineered because I distrust Halliday's skills as a writer, far from it. If this is all spontaneous, that's equally impressive. It's just that it works so well. It's just that, as mentioned, this reads like the book of a truly and truly amazingly skilled writer who knows debut the literary novels so much, they can write one, you know, they, they can basically engineer one. Also, of course, this is Halliday's debut novel, so maybe that was all and um, entirely spontaneous and she just listened to what she wanted to write and came up with a debut novel that reads like, again, the archetype of all debut novels. Uh, finally, I'm going to mention that idea. The uh, old man in this book is Philip Roth. Apparently, Halliday and Philip Roth dated for a while when she was young and worked as in, uh, at a publishing house, uh, and several articles discuss uh, this idea in the book. Uh, and the idea of, you know, the fascination of reading about Philip Roth's sexual and personal life. Uh, that's of course there, it's one of the charms of the book. I be silly denying that, that that's absolutely there, but I do not think that the book lives or dies based on that, absolutely. Even, you know, if you remove that element from the novel, it's still an amazing piece of literature. It actually, at the end of the day, doesn't really add anything to the awesomeness of the formula. I personally love uh, those types of books, uh, I, um, one of my favorite novels is uh, The Marriage Plot by Jeffrey Eugenides, and one of the characters there is supposed to be David Foster Wallace, that's doubtful, uh, Eugenides himself denied that, uh, but you know, part of the charm of reading that novel is reading about an, a writer you know, and that's there, and to me it's largely an innocuous pleasure, uh, you shouldn't only read the book because of some kind of gossipy curiosity, that would be wrong. That said, if you're going to read Asymmetry just because you're curious about Philip Roth's behavior behind closed doors, I'm, go I'm sure you're going to stay much longer after the, uh, you know, the curiosity effect has worn out, uh, because the book is going to win you over. And let me know what you think about Asymmetry, and thanks to the great people at Granta for my copy of the book, and if Lisa Halliday is going to stay in Milan, um, and she's going to live there. I'm sure she'll get an Ambrogino sooner or later. She deserves it. Uh, the Ambrogino is kind of like the Pulitzer Prize or the Nobel Prize, but obviously much more important. Uh, thank you as always for watching, guys. In a second, I'm going to put links on the screen to a couple other videos I filmed. One of them is going to be my review of Love and Treasure by Ayelet Woolman, another impossibly beautiful novel. As I mentioned, my favorite book from last year and another must read. Thank you for watching once more. Bye, guys.